Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Um, excuse me. It's like, nigga, did you just take talks? Oh. <laughs> like, what the fuck, nigga? This nigga pop out tongs out the fucking pocket, nigga. <laughs> No, no. Um, Welcome back to another episode of Unos and Friends. We got a very special guest with me, my brother. He's been on the label for a minute. Just dropped his debut album on the label not too long ago. My brother, Mike June. What's up, though, What's man? Up, I appreciate boy? it. Yes, sir. Dog, yes, sir. How your week been? It been straight? Yeah, man. You know. Um, yeah, I've been all right. Trials and tribulations. Other than that, I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. You know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Well, good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> All right, let's get into it. Um, so, why the name June the Man? June. Like, what's the story behind it? Why the name June the Man? Well, um, June originates from Mike Junior, right? But then, um, like I said before, I got the name from you because I was, we were sitting in the garage at my dad's house, and I was like, "Man, I, I don't like my name, Mike Junior, as a stage name. That sounds tired." I was like, what you got for me? You was like, bro, Mike June sound hard. I was like, you <laughs> right, though. That does sound tight. All right, so that's where June came from. Um, but man, the man came from, um, if you've seen Game of Thrones, right? Remember Jack and Agar? No face. No, no man. Face. Yeah, the, the, faceless man, man. the faceless man. My dog, he always said a man this, a man that. So I just started saying that, and I just flipped the A with the man instead because I won't lie to you. I be feeling like the man a lot. You know, so you know, you know, know, you know, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, it's okay. I understand. I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I dropped the EP uh, sometime last year Mm -hmm. Um, before the album or before your recent project. It was called The Experience. Mm -hmm. What was the story behind that project? What made you go with that route and drop an EP first before you dropped the whole project? So, with The Experience, man, it was originally supposed to be called No Hard Feelings, but. It was just something about that album or that EP. Um, I wanted to get my music out there because I've been talking about it for so long, bro. Um, getting my own stuff out there as opposed to when I was in the group, you know, with my cousin and then another guy. Um, so I wanted that to go out there, but I just want it was like a feeler kind of thing. I wanted to see how people would like it, you know. So that's why. We dropped it as the EP as opposed to a full length album because it was good, but it wasn't great okay. yet, you know, okay. at least how I think about it now. How was the experience like creating that project if you could remember? Oh man, it was a lot of fun, dude. That's, that's, it was the, that album was basically a prerequisite to Blue Lights because I was originally making that, making those songs under the blue LED lights. So yeah. that was, it was a prerequisite to that. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I was just doing it under those lights, and I like that's when I finally found my sound, the the ambient, kind of airy feeling, um, in the music. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The highlight of the project to me was you know featuring Matthew Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my joints on there. Yeah. How long did the how how did that song come about? Man, I was what's crazy is, <laughs> I was a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I was sitting in the studio. And I'm on Beat Stars and I'm flipping through beats. When I hear this one, and I was like, "Oh, I like that. That's I like. I like the way that beat sounds. It's really upbeat." Um, and I finished that. I wrote the song, bro. Like I wrote it and recorded it in like honestly, like maybe 25 minutes. It was so fast. Um, and then when I heard it, I was like, "Yeah, Bill needs to be on here." Matthew Aaron, by the way, phenomenal artist. We wouldn't be anywhere we are without him, man. Facts. Like my dog. Big facts. Yes, sir. Um. So we're going to tell you, it's, t- it's time of the show where the guests pick, you know, what we drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're not a big shot, shot, shot guy, but uh, we're going to sip a little bit. You can sip. Yeah. You can sip a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, What we sipping on? Shit, I was about to say, last time I checked, I was grown. I could have a sip, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Huh. How about we not do the one in the middle of, you know? No. Nah, yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. Hey. Yeah, don't say the name. Oh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, check. yeah, for sure, for when sure. When they cut the check, then we you get You know what I'm saying? saying? For sure. Uh, well, if that's the case, we're not going to try this one that looks like urine. How about we try this over here, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, you dig, my yes, dog. You know, get the honest. Cool, cool, cool. By the way, I don't drink. I don't. I don't smoke. 
She doesn't smoke. I don't cuss. Doesn't cuss. I don't know that. We're going to talk about that a little later. Yes, but don't sir. say you don't drink. Because you're pouring up right now. I should say, I don't drink to get drunk. I drink to enjoy the drink without catching a buzz, is what I should say. Facts. Not me. You are, brother. I get drunk to get fucked up every time. That was my old way of life, you know. Old way. Old always, way. always. 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 Okay. Y'all give a round of applause for yourselves, man. You know. Beautiful. It's beautiful in here, man. It is. And let me just say something for the record. Just because I don't do none of that don't mean I don't... Doesn't mean that I judge anybody who does. I don't want to state that for the record. I don't ever look down on nobody except myself. That's it. Cheers to that. Cheers to that, my Cheers brother. To my brother. Love you guys, mm-hmm. man. That's not bad, actually. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Breathe, dog. <laughs> Breathe, dog. <laughs> Breathe, dog. Breathe, dog. There's it. All right. Second favorite song on is uh, what about what about now? Mm-hmm. This song's super deep to me, like. Just listening to it and yeah. kind of just vibing to it. Um, what's the story behind that song? Oh, well, first of all, thanks for the compliment. Yeah, I'm glad brother. you like it, man. Yeah. Um, you know, just when you go through your um, your, your issues in your relationship, um, uh, what's crazy about it, though, is I was in like an, an emotional state. And I was thinking, I want, I want an emotional record on here. So I was thinking, I'm like, you know. Would you like? Would she stay with me right now, even when it gets ugly? Like, like, what about now? Okay, well, what about now? Okay, but what about now? You still gonna rock with me? And then she, you know, and then and if she is, you're like, okay, this is a real one. You know, then we can we can work through anything, man. If if because when it gets ugly, it gets ugly, man. It, it, you know, domestic disturbances. You know, I, I mean, as far as like you know, like yelling at each other and I'm done with you. I'm out. Slam the door in a well. You come Toxic back. Shit. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and sorry for the technical difficulties, um, but I was talking about a quick story real quick on that song. Um, so it was a story I was reading, and it was like pretty much this girl had gotten sick. She had gotten cancer or whatever, and her fiance or no, her her husband that she was married to was like, "I'm not staying with nobody that's inevitably." gonna die that was his logic behind it that's foul she ends up getting cured of it he ends up hitting her up Mm -hmm. he files divorce like paperwork and everything yeah he calls the lawyer to eliminate the paperwork to terminate the divorce that he sent Mm -hmm. once she got healthy yeah and tried to rekindle the relationship and she was like hell no for sure you didn't love me when it was tough like why do you think you deserve me again Mm-hmm. When everything is great, you know, it just yeah. kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, man, that's deep, bro. I mean, because that does tie into it. You're right, bro. That that like, if you're not willing to stick through, you know, the thick and thin, like how I said in the song, I said, I know that it's hard, but we're gonna, we're gonna work on it. Um, it's true. It's like no matter how hard it gets, all that lovey dovey, sticky icky, ooey gooey, you know, I don't mean a thing because love ultimately is a. Is is work, man? You know. But when do you, devil's advocate? <clears throat> when do you decide that? All right, I've tried enough. I've tried all I can try. Is there a point where it gets like that? Mm. Where do you feel like okay, I've done everything possible mm-hmm. for this woman or for this man? Does it? Can, can is that still? Do you still expect a person to be like, uh, I'm gonna ride till the wheels fall <laughs> off? Like, nigga, you done ran into the yeah, mountain like a hundred times. You feel smack. me? So, I I feel like it depends, bro. You know what if? Oh man, All right, we going we gonna go down that, that down that road. We gonna change it real quick. We no, 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 it. no. I like it. I like it really quick. And I'll be quick. I'll be quick. So it's like for for my case, obviously, it's because yeah. I'm married, right? So I have no choice but to work it out because I'm like, I told you face to face in your eyes, you know, I'm committed to you forever. So regardless of how she, f- what she does or what she doesn't do, I have to uphold my side. You so know? let me ask you this as a married man, mm-hmm. you don't believe in divorce. 
mm. at all. Well, there's 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 uh, extenuating circumstances that would be permissible, yeah, bro. But for the most part, I'm gonna leave you because it ain't working out. I'm just mad at you all the time. Nah, nah, can't can't do that. So, circumstantial mm-hmm. is divorce is necessary or not necessary? Um, it's never necessary. It's like if she, like let's say let's say she. Cheats on me. Okay, let's say she cheats on me one time. I'd be like, all right, you know, that hurts. That sucks. But I ain't about to leave. You know, we human. You got it out your system. All right, you know, I'm going to feel like a dummy. I'm going to feel like an idiot. But I'm like, that's the dummy I don't love you no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if it's if it's a compete, if it's a, if it's a repeated offense over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, that's when it's, the situation's like, okay. Yeah. Then, this is it. Yeah. This yeah, is I'm it. Done with you. All right, let's get back on this music shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like that. <laughs> we went to dinner the other night, and that was the dinner. I was like, talking in the conversation at the fucking dinner table. I'm like, yo, my nigga. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Nobody wants to fucking hear that shit. I'm eating my fucking shrimp and just my and steak cr- and, and fucking... And cr- cr- brulee, whatever Fucking up was, my crème brûlée, nigga. Like, fuck. Man, yeah, shit. Uh, Ice your chips. Man. Mm. Cause they tough though. Yeah. All relationships Man. are tough. It doesn't matter if it's friendship or right. partnership, business relationships. Everything is tough for sure. It is, man. People. You talked about it a little bit. You don't cuss, talk sexual, or anything in your music. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the reason behind it? I know it as your brother, but <laughs> yeah. let the people know a little bit. What's the reason behind why you choose to not do that? Oh, man. Um, so... I had a change of life, really, man. You know, when I was 19, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And um, I had an encounter with God, man, that completely, you know, flipped my life completely over. So ever since I had that that um, experience with him, I was, I found, it's crazy, it's hard to explain, but I found it literally impossible for me to cuss willingly, you know, to swear, to use profanity like willingly is really really hard for me to do it's strange man I've actually never I think I might have in the 10 years yeah. we've known each other once. maybe once yeah once maybe once and it was yeah. nigga <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't even like no cuss word like it was nigga like <laughs> I don't even say that word man I mean I only use it um, honestly when I'm a really really here's a new here's word of the day apoplectic like overcome with anger like that, that happens when, like, in a video game or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Under my breath, in my head, I'd be like, this, you know? I'd be yeah. like, that's the only time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Video games, bro. Video game. Boy, who you telling? You dig, bro. Boy, I'm, <laughs> I'm not accustomed, okay? I'm nice when it comes to the sticks, the games mm-hmm. that I choose mm-hmm. to play. Mm-hmm. I'm not accustomed. I haven't played in a year, you know what I'm saying? I haven't played video games in a year. I just haven't. I'm going to keep looking for you then, bro. I haven't played I'm in a year. That. I'm going to keep looking for you. I no, I got. I, I found some shit, but I've been playing. Okay. I'm not accustomed to not being that guy. And it's taken me a little minute to yeah. get to, to to where I'm comfortable, where, where, yeah. where I'm nice. Yeah, but, yeah, you for know, sure, for sure. we back and we going to get back. That's right. You my know dog, what I'm saying? I'm dog. only two days in. Y'all niggas spare with me. You know what I'm saying? Bear with me. <laughs> Um, Don't break the control, dude. I almost broke my TV today. I almost threw my controller Bro, I, at my oh TV my today. God, I was fucking dude. so fucking mad. I almost <laughs> broke my fan. I'm sitting there cut, and that's why I don't play because I get so mad. Like it's I a get, different kind of anger, bro. It's different. You look it's, crazy yelling yeah, at a yeah, TV. Yeah, you look crazy. Like, <laughs> you look crazy. Man, I'm about to ooh, going crazy, shoot. bro. Um, besides the music, mm-hmm. um, what's the message that you want to? leave across to the people i know everyone has a deeper meaning and a purpose on earth yeah um what do you feel like yours is my message or purpose both what do you feel like your purpose is for your individual self maybe for your music also Mm -hmm. and what do you feel like your message is that you want to leave on this earth okay impact i guess instead of message whatever okay um and my Purpose on Earth. It, it's uh, I have a general idea of what it is, you know, and that is truly, 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 truly to be a light. A light that shines in the darkness. To to 
And this is what I was talking about when it came to love, bro. Like, I mean, that's pretty much like if I was gone, I'd want that to be my legacy is love. And that right there is the hardest thing in the world, bro, is to love. You know, like, you remember in Interstellar where, where Matt Damon was like, he was like, you know, we can care deeply for others, but that that empathy rarely extends beyond our line of sight, meaning only people within our immediate vicinity, folks that we actually care about, we're going to feel that way towards, but to a total stranger, we're not going to feel that way. And it's like with love, man, what I couldn't understand about it is that it's not, it's not so much just that beautiful feeling, but it's that, it's that determination to have goodwill towards individuals regardless of what they've done it's having a non-retaliatory stance when somebody offends you then you bless them you know what i'm saying like just trying to get to that it's like bro I, I, it's hard man but I'm, I'm trying for it so that's like how i want to impact but as far as like my music too i wanted to bring back a certain level of uh well honestly not even that i mean because i just don't cuss or mm -hmm. talk about sexual stuff like that it's just i have no choice but to Sing about stuff that doesn't include that, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I you have to get choice. deeper. Yeah, like yeah, I have to get really deep, like with what about now stuff like that. But then I don't want to be just the the brooding guy, just off in the cut in my feelings. Cause you know what I'm saying? That's not who I am, bro. Yeah. You know. But yeah, that I guess that that that'd be like a good summation of it. Do you feel like it's a challenge to be dealing with so many personalities and people, but also trying so if it's work or if it's shit, a studio session or if it's just everyday life of you might a show where you have to encounter with a bunch of people and different people's way of living and mm -hmm. way of thinking does it sometimes become a challenge for you to not let somebody else's emotions affect you mm -hmm. because it's easy it's easy to not let someone's emotions affect you or 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 response or a way that they do something when you're not around people. Right. But when, now when you're around people all the time and you expose yourself to different people's way of thinking, yeah. does it sometimes become a challenge for you, do you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um Excuse me. It's like Like did you just take Tom's? No. Nah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Um, man, yeah, it does affect me, bro. I can, when I'm, it's, it's funny you say that, like, yeah, man, when I'm out and about and I'm seeing all those things, um, yeah, it, it affects my soul. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's seeing what people do, how they act, how they treat each other. Oh, yeah, it affects my soul a lot, man. And, and how people respond to me based off of their emotions, I mean, it's like, I will sit here and tell you I'm not perfect. I'll probably end up doing the same thing. And I'll be the first one to say, don't react off your emotions. Because it's true. You know, we're not supposed to. We're supposed to just think about it first before I actually do something. Which I do for the most part, but if some dude's pressing me someplace somewhere, you know, obviously the, the ego in me is like, Ooh, okay. So it's like that, you know. I had to tell my friend the other day, like, you're so much a reactive person. Mm -hmm. Like, you react yeah. immediately before yeah. thinking of what someone says, before processing what someone says, yeah. before you ever think of what you actually want to say, you're just reacting. Mm -hmm. How, like, you're never going to get anywhere that way. It's a fact, dude. Like, you're never going to get anywhere that way. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's one of the most hardest lessons people learn, like. And the hardest thing to deal with, bro, if you're close and to And to it. stop, too. Yeah. Because... Shit, we're human. Yeah. So it's yeah. easy to, hey, fuck you. Mm -hmm. What? Fuck me. Immediately. Whoa, immediately. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, like, wow. it, yeah, tell honey. Up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll be chilling. I wake up in the morning. I'm good. I hop chilling. on two. Yeah. I just said it. I hop on two K. <laughs> yeah. And I want a honey. <laughs> For real. Let a nigga bro. say so. This nigga sucks. <laughs> hey. I'm up, nigga. What? Play me one on one, nigga. It's up, nigga. Like. That's funny you said. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. Yeah. It it just comes where. It's those feelings, bro. Those feelings. Man. <laughs> I went through your Twitter. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, bro, you don't be talking about nothing. Mm -hmm. But, 
scripture mm-hmm. and Marvel. Mm-hmm. And you be bashing Marvel. All the way. You be bashing Marvel. Unapologetically. First of all, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how important, I mean, you just talked about it. My question was how important is it for you to spread love? Mm-hmm. And you talked about that's what you want your purpose to be at the yeah. end of the day. You know, your message to be. Yeah. But um, how important is the word of God to you? Or how important is the word of God to get to others? Like, how important is it to you to spread the gospel? And because when people go on your Instagram, yeah. they're going to only see that. Or Twitter, they're only going to yeah. see that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and then I know you do your own sermons and, you know, you're yeah. very in that. Mm-hmm. So, how important is it to, to you for people to get that message? Man, it's the most important thing in my life. Most important I had to learn, man, that, like, God, him, he has to come even before myself. And I and I could say he has to come before my girl, but it's like, as a human being, bro, I know myself, and, you know, if we, we're, us humans, we're selfish. We're going to choose ourselves over <laughs> most anybody. So I'm like, I have to have it where he comes first more than anything, so to, to be able to you know, articulately express what the word of God is saying without, you know, like sugarcoating it or forcing it down somebody's throat. It's the most important thing to me, man. Most important thing in life. Oh, yeah. As a man of the Lord, how hard is it um, to be in this music seat and then also have to be a follower of Christ and <laughs> and see the, see the cap that goes on, but yeah. also... I'm not even gonna say play the fence because you don't play the fence at all. But where, how hard is that though? Like to not play the fence, to not be like, all right, on this song, I'm gonna just man go crazy one time because I can. Yeah, bro, it's. I mean, it's it's that kind of stuff. It's um, it can prove to be a difficulty. Yeah, because you know, I'm around y'all and you guys create really. Like candy, you know what I'm saying? Candy to my ears. Like just the, the, the melodic way and stuff you're talking about. Um, because you guys are actually living it. So there's a difference. So I can't get up on a mic and talk about something I ain't doing. I, I, that's just not my style. Um, but to to be in this industry and to be around a certain things that we see, you know, like it's... <laughs> Bro, hey, man, it's hard, bro. It's too hard, man. That's what it is. That's why I be off in the cut so much. That's why I be at home, bro. You know, I'm like, I'm going to stay right here, stay bro. Right I'm going to stay right here. Like, you know, I need to be I need to be comfortable because I know myself. If I get, if I get on up out there, it's only a matter of time before I fall. Sure. I'll never give myself the benefit of the doubt, really. I'm like, I, I suck. I'm going to fall. That's going to happen. How, how tough is it to battle with the ego that you have to have in being an artist? And then the ego that you're yeah. not supposed to have and being yeah. the God fearing man. Cause that's one of the most things about art shit, being an artist in any facet. Yeah. The confidence yeah. and the, you know, I, people say confidence, but it's ego, bro. Mm-hmm. It's you, 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 I, a nigga can't tell you nothing. I'm the, right. I put in this work, I put in my 10,000 hours. Up, I up. know what the fuck I'm doing. Straight I up. know when it comes to this shit, a nigga mm-hmm. can't fuck with me. You have to have that energy. You do. Or you lost yeah. already. It's like sports. Yeah. You have to have that energy. But in the spiritual world, and, and uh, you're not supposed to have none of that. So how, it, like, how do you, and your name's the man. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how yeah, do yeah. you, how do you bat? How do how does that how does that battle go in your head? Very, very, very like in a very difficult way, man. This whole thing is just difficult. That's all I can say, bro. It's hard, like because I, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I am the man. You know what I'm saying? I feel that way. I I know that I am. Like it's 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 shoot. So it's like the only way I can. Like marry the two. The only way I can do that is if I'm like, I, I if I'm feeling like man, this guy can't touch me or this person that like my music. If I'm going, if I'm off in that mindset, I have to think of it as, okay, I gotta. If I'm visualizing a specific individual, I have to replace that individual with myself to be like, okay, I'm better than that mic. I'm better than that one. 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 That's the only way I'm able to do it because I got an ego, you know. I, oh, I so you do water boy shit. 
like the movie Waterboy. What happened? Like where the nigga like he can't hit shit that's too nice. He gotta hit shit that's giving him like yeah. bad times. So yeah, he just bro. like create. He just imagined that that's, oh, the that's person. Right. Yeah, yeah, he, he just imagined mama, yeah, like yeah. that. Like <laughs> yeah, you talked about my mama, nigga. I don't know your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who you are at all. Like, I don't even know who you so are. So I'm not going to yeah. battle you. I'm going to battle myself. So yeah. I'm going to replace you with me. <laughs> that's a really good analogy, bro. Yeah, that's exactly it, man. That's the only way I can do it without turning into a, you know, a full-fledged scumbag, you know, which can happen. It's crazy. Yeah. That's Let's crazy. give a round of applause for that shit. Yeah, so we're about to move on to the album, but let's take another shot or... I did not, good sir. Y'all got some drinks for my man? He got it. Oh, you got, got it right here. Oh, yeah, see, look you know, at you. Houdini. Yeah, you know. Houdini. Houdini. Houdini, dog. Oh, I just thought of a good black and white question right now. All right, let's do it. You still got some? Yeah, I got some. You good? Okay, cool. I'm going to ask this way. Slide it this way. Um, all right, let's get into the first question. Let's do it. So, Blue Lights, that's the name you decided to grow with. Yes, sir. For your debut project, solo project. Yeah. In a in a, in a yeah. full in a full, yeah. what's the story behind that? Why did you decide that name? Um, like how I said for the experience, how that was a prerequisite to the album Blue Lights, because I was under the blue LED lights, and I liked the way that the lights felt while I was making the music. So I wanted to capture that moment and what I felt, and I wanted that to encapsulate the entire album to create a feeling, man, that um, that I got. While listening to the songs, like with, with Bam, when he was listening to Red Flags, and he was just like, my arms were about ready to go to sleep. I was like, that's the exact reason why I made the song the way I did, and I made it so airy and ambient. So that's why I called it Blue Lights, was to put you in the feeling, really. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's get into the track list. You start off with uh, with Lights. Yes, sir. Damn, man. Title of the project. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It makes sense, you know, everything that you're talking about, mm-hmm. why you named it, kind of turn the lights up, make them blue, yeah. you know what I mean? The whole <clears throat> was that the goal? Was that the goal? Was that the goal to make, to 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 tie, to make the first song, obviously? Yes, yes. So I don't have to ask you, why'd you name it Blue Lights? Yeah. You can listen to the first exactly. song and hear exactly why I named it Blue Lights. Yep, that's it. That was, it was intentional. And, and, and it's like I said before, that song had about seven different iterations and they was all boof boof awful awful i hated every single one of them i hated each iteration that i made and then it took me that song honestly took me like two months to finish yeah. at least because i was like no nah, i don't like that i don't like this i don't like that i don't like this i don't like that and then i finally settled on it and i was like yeah it sounds amazing so i had to put uh dim the lights dim the lights make them blue because you know, it was the name of the album. I wanted to put that in there just to throw it in there to make it kind of like the title track, if you will. But then Lights, too, it's like, you know, each song is basically a light. That's why I say welcome to the light show, you know. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let it bleed, nigga. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did the song If You Were Me come together? I love that song, man. You and, um, you and Philly, Phyllis Driller, by the way, whose album just came out not that long ago, back from the date. Go get that. Um, that came together because I wanted both you and I wanted Philly on it. I wanted it. And I, and I was asking Bill, um, Matthew Aaron, I was asking him, I was like, hey, you got any, I, I want some of your beats, man. Because I had them on the album, on the on the EP the first time, but I wanted a Matthew Aaron beat. It was yeah. it was a necessity. Yeah. And um, I heard that beat and I was like, ooh, I like that. So just hearing that song, I, what's crazy is, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to be long-winded either, if You Were Me was actually an idea for the next project that I wanted to make. I wanted that to be the name of the uh, the, the next album, If You Were Me. Because um, it's like a play on words, man. It's not like if I was you. It's if you were me. If you knew what I was thinking, if you knew what I was doing, if you knew my motives were, and you knew how much of a dirtbag, you know, speaking to my wife, if you knew how much of a dirtbag I can be, mm-hmm. there's no way you stay with me. No yeah. way. That's why I started off my verse with that. Because I, I was like, that's the really, <laughs> when you told me, weird. like, all right, we're going to do a song, we're going to do about yeah. this, I'm like, I was going through some shit in my personal life, yeah. too, so I'm like, yeah. okay, like, well, <clears throat> I can't even lie to you. If I were, yeah. if you were, if I was you, I'd leave. I would have dipped. <laughs> Straight I up, man. Up on that 
And you guys, you guys did such a, and I'm serious, man. You guys did such a great job, dude. I, when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is cool. That's why that's one of those popular songs, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. That, that one's one of the most popular songs. You guys did so great on it, man. For sure. Amazing. Appreciate you for letting me be on it. Man, sure. bro, thanks for getting on it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I love, love y'all, man. Love man. Straight up. Uh, all on me. All Super on me. vibe. I do As soon as the song comes on. Yeah. When I get up. <laughs> Shake some, love some, some. Hey, like, hey, where the day, where, where she at? Yeah, where, where she, she at? at? Where, 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 where she at? Uh, <laughs> was that the idea that you wanted for the song to get people out their yes. feet and kind of just start dancing? Yeah, and, bro, you know? for sure. Because the the whole album is so not to cut you off, bro. I be doing, oh, you man, did. I hate when I do that. 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 that <laughs> All right, for sure. Okay. Um, because you was looking like, bro, you don't want to be finished. Like, I got smoke in my eyes. Uh, what's it called? So, uh, yeah, I wanted, I wanted a dance record on it. I wanted something to switch up the pace just a bit. I didn't want somebody to be so just, you know, like, just sleep, really. I mean, you know, you gotta stay up to hear the album. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, I'm gonna put you to sleep the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. For sure. Uh, most R&B song singers, they make show, songs to kind of show off their vocal range. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm not a huge fan of, mm-hmm. but as we were talking about Kaylani, yeah, she's amazing, yeah, but she just is it's a pocket. It's like Bryson, yeah, bro. It just stays in a pocket, yeah, which is fire. Mm-hmm. It kind of, but not only do you not, but you don't really show off your vocal range a lot in a lot of the songs, but you storytell mm-hmm. in a lot of your songs, mm-hmm. which is a lost form in R&B today. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel like people really do that no more. I don't think people do that in music in general. But you kind of do that in every song. I can... What your song is titled is the story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the story in that shit. Like, for sure. For sure. how did it... How long did it take you to get confident in the ability to just to be like, all right, I'm gonna let... Literally, my thoughts... Yeah. Fuck everything else, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just gonna let my thoughts and I'm gonna re- arrange it later. Yeah, you know what I mean? Up. After I get my thoughts out, how confident, how long did it take you to get that confidence? Man, bro, honestly, I started singing and like switched up to be R&B in 2015 because I was a rapper before all this. So it took me a good mm. man, it took me a good four years to where I finally got confident in doing that finally because I can't hit a note man you know I can't without the auto tune I can't yeah thank you man like I can hit a note but it's like I don't want to because I'm not the best singer you know I'm not you know that <laughs> I'm not trying to do that live no I'm not no sorry Bob like you gonna uh, like I'm hitting me flat like you know um um but um I wanted something to be more melodic, but you're right. Yeah, I am a storyteller, but I've always been that way too because when I was rapping, I'd write three sixteens, you know, and you'd have to like really pull out of your head what you're trying to say because three verses, three sixteen verses, like that's a lot. That's a lot to talk about, man. That's a one topic. Yeah, <laughs> on one topic. Hell no, nah, boy. That's a lot of spit. It's too much. I'm saving that spit for fifteen <laughs> songs. Like, <laughs> like you said, three verse, three sixteen. I'm gonna bro. take that bitch. That's two one sixteen. That's two that's songs two right there, bro. That's Split two songs. That I'm splitting that whole Put up. Some filler in there. Yeah. Two songs. Hook. Now all I gotta do is create a hook, nigga. That's, you got me fucked up. Straight up. Uh, the little, uh, the red flag challenge was going around. Yeah. It was going viral. Yeah. You had a song red flags on the project. To, Clout. Did you make it before or after? After? What you mean? <laughs> I ain't going to sit here and cap on camera. No. Nah. <laughs> it was it was after. I seen that and I was like, you right, man. We do talk about red flags. I ain't heard a song about red flags yet. So I was like, let me go ahead and just, let me go back. You know what I'm saying? Clout, yeah, you know, like let me let me go back and look at these past little, you know, little flings. I was saying, people things. fuck with red flags, though. They do. Oh, people for fuck sure. with That's red right. flags, though. That's red right. flags is hard. Thank you. Fan favorite old habits, though. I know it's weird, bro. Yeah, I, I like this. I like the song. I definitely wouldn't have thought it would have been no a, a one of the no favorite. man. That's crazy. Uh, what was the thought process behind uh, making that song, and how did you feel listening back to it when it was finished? Did you feel like it was gonna be you already kind of said it, but yeah. did you feel like it was going to be a fan favorite? No. Man, going into that record, it was, I wanted to 
I just thought of the word old habits, and I was like, and I was well, not not even that. I'm sorry. It was like I think so much in my relationship that. I realize I'm like, man, I have some tendencies that just won't go away. I have some old habits that just won't die out. And I don't know. It's crazy because I was single for so long or I was in a relationship with somebody and I had a specific way of dealing with things. <clears throat> and then that carrying over into the, you know, my new relationship. Well, not new, but carrying over into the, you know, my marriage. Um, I was like, I wanted to make a song about that because I was like, I'm terrible at expressing my feelings. I'm horrible at it. I hate talking about my feelings. I abhor it, man. I don't even do. I don't even do it in prayer, bro. That's just not my thing. I, I can't ex- be vulnerable too much like that. But for and it sounds so cliche, but when it comes to the music, I'm like, this is basically like my way of telling my girl what I'm not gonna tell her. You know what I'm. This is like if she listens to it and I tell her, I'm like, you know, this song's about you, right? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I don't. She don't tell me if she thinks about it too much, but I'm like, if you want to know what I'm thinking. And listen, that's it. Listen yeah. To that. yeah, listen, listen to, to that. that. Listen to that song right there. But as far as being a fan favorite, but I was not expecting that, man. After I heard it, I was like, oh, it's cool. Yeah, I like it. This, this, this ain't too bad. But then I was going to scrap it. I didn't want it on the album. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I, I was like, yeah, it's cool. But then you was like, oh, I like the song. And then Phil was like, oh, I like the song. And Chris was like, oh, yeah, I like the song. And I was like, all right, cool. And Dre was like, oh, I like the song. Yeah. And then Ty was like, oh, I like that. Yeah, I was like, dang, yeah. really? I was like, okay, I guess we're going to keep it. Okay, I guess we keep it. I guess we keep it. It's my mask off. That's what it is. It's my mask <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Shoot. You recorded and mixed all of this shit by yourself. Mm-hmm. Which is, you took, what well, people don't understand is you took your t- like people don't understand how hard that is first of all to write the song first of all fuck that find the beat find the beat bro find a beat <laughs> that takes yeah. me hours yeah. nigga now if i'm in a vibe where i'm like i'm just yeah fuck it mm-hmm. and i'm load it up yeah. I'm going. It don't matter. Straight then up. it's cool. But if I'm sh- like struggling, yeah. beats is everything. You know what I <laughs> Bro, mean? Beats everything. is everything. Straight up. So Straight you got to find a beat. Mm-hmm. You got to write that shit out. Yeah. You got to record that bitch. Yep. Then after you do all that shit, re- and niggas recording, to me, it, I take I take two minutes to record. <laughs> you do though. I bro. take two minutes to record. <laughs> you do, but it's different. <laughs> There's niggas that take, I mean, forty five hours. hours to record a fucking eight bar. Bro. So record Man. your shit mm-hmm. till you like it how it sounds. Mm-hmm. Then go back, do your doubles, do your ad libs. Then mix the bitch. Then arrange it first, and then arrange then it first, it. Yeah, and yeah. then mix it. Yep. Find the keys, find the pitch, yep. find where you want to be in, find the sound you want to be in, the ambiance yes. you're trying to create. Make sure that it can transfer from your compu- from yo speakers to another nigga speakers. Yeah. Then master the motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That whole process <clears throat> is like a ten man job. True, I wouldn't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't know. So Shoot. talk about how talk about. Wanting to decide, all right, I'm about to just mix my shit and I'm going to just do everything myself to the best of my abilities. I'm really glad you phrased the question that way, man, because I had, I literally had Billiam in mind, Matthew Aaron, I had Bill in mind. That man worked so darn hard, bro, mixing and producing and recording everybody's stuff in seven, including his own. That man works I was like, I can't put Bill through that, man. I was like, not if I have my own software. I got my own equipment. I was like, I got to give bro a break. He, he's definitely going to master it for, for sure. sure. You is, my dog. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he, has to, he has to master it. But I had him, I literally, I had him in mind. Oh, I had you and him in mind because of everything you guys was doing, being so busy and all that, having to make time, that I was like, let me just teach myself, really. You know, let me just do it myself. Um, and it came out pretty good, man. For the most part, I think I, I think I do an okay job at mixing some uh, some stuff together. But you're right, the process is grueling, bro. It it is just to record it, and and then especially too, man. If I have 
multiple, multiple, multiple takes. Like, if you even pull it up, you can, like, hit that drop down arrow. You can see there's, like, 10 takes, 10, 15 <laughs> takes on each. Sure. Like, bro, it's crazy, man. But, yeah, it was because of Bill. I wanted to give him a break. I can't get... I can't... I, I don't know. I'm of the future thug, gonna claw. Mm-hmm. Load it up. <laughs> get it out of there. Load it up. I'm gonna hit it out the yeah, park and we gonna up. get it out of there. Next. I just, I, I, I love it though. It's like Drake said though, bro. I just take my time without, you know, yeah. I still believe in that. Like, <laughs> he don't believe in that now, but. Right. <laughs> no, he doesn't. That's a fact. Um, Shoot. That's me. Mm-hmm. The song makes me feel like I'm in a family barbecue. That's tight. Like, that's tight. Just the old school bop. Yeah. Probably the realest song on the project, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think every nigga can really relate to it. You know yeah, what I mean? I think every female, sure, it, sure. you know, can relate to it in some aspects. Absolutely. I think everybody can relate everybody. to it. You know. Yeah. Um, what was your thoughts on uh, making this song? So like, and then like, how did it, how did it come about? Man, I think I told myself I wasn't going to really explain how that came together, but I was biting. Low-key, I won't even lie. Like, um, Kalani. You know that song with Keisha Cole? Um, when you see him, no, that's on me. Mm. I mean, like that. Now, and then and then there was another there was another record I can't remember, but it was talking just like that. Like, oh, uh, take a shot. Yeah, uh, the way you walk, that's me. You know, so it was like... I was like, man, that's real though. I'm like, that's real. Let me just turn this into a whole song. But then it's 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 just like in my in my in my relationship, you know. Uh, but is that biting though? No, it's not. Okay, it's not biting. It's not. But it's it's take, taking inspiration from. It's inspiration. Yeah, that's inspiration. what music and that's what life is though. That's what yeah. art is supposed to be. Inspirational. For sure. For Niggas sure. got paintings and don't even know what the fuck it means. <laughs> if you ask a nigga what the Mona Lisa, if the nigga that created Bruh, the Mona Lisa, ask up, him what it means, up. it's going to be completely different than the nigga at the option trying to sell the Mona Lisa. Straight up. Straight up. So, my bad to cut you no, off. No, no, you good, bro. Because you, because you, you're right. I, I like starting off with being like, just telling the whole truth first and, you, and then somebody else correct me like no that ain't how it is you know yeah. that way I don't ever I don't seem like a oh, captain the, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> humility man but um um that ain't humility that ain't humility <laughs> <laughs> it's just being honest man because yeah. it's like it's it's that I wanted to talk about how it can be in relationships because it doesn't matter the, the male can copy the female the female can copy the male and that's really what it was all about and then you get that really good feeling where you're just like, okay, you know, this person trusts trust me as a as her leader to, you know, steer her in the right direction. So if she's copying me here, she's gonna copy me and excuse me, like my character and how I handle situations and whatnot. Which she does. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Then finally long enough. I think it's no, we have there's two more on there. Mm-hmm. Long no, long enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last one. Last one. I think it's super dope that you and Thrillist got a song on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all being on the same label, also having the love of R and B. Y'all both are probably the only R and B artists on the, you know, like that on the yeah. on the label. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought it was a great idea for y'all to be on the, on the same song. For I sure. know the fans wanted y'all to be on the same song. How did this song come about? And uh, tell me a little bit what's the song about. So first of all, shout out to Thrillist, man. He just dropped his album too. That's my dog, man. Uh, <laughs> the Chronicles of Leatherwood, the Leather Man. Leather Man. Go get that. It's on all platforms. Um, um, Thrillist, man. What's funny is when I showed you, when I showed you, Bill, and I think somebody else at my dad's house. I got you. When I showed you guys, um, old habits. Remember when you heard old habits the first time at my yes, dad's house? Yeah, yeah. That day, I think, I think that was the day that Thrillist was like, we need to get on the record together, like how Chris Brown and Drake did with No Guidance. I think that's what you said, if I'm not mistaken, my dog. And uh, I was like, yeah, you're right. Um, but, you know, the, the the time never really, it just wasn't ready yet. But I knew I wanted him on a record. And I had I was sitting on this beat that I had for a while. Um, a bit that, as you can tell, is really up-tempo. It's really Chris Brown-esque. And, you know, and I know that Thrillers can get in that pocket a lot. So um, I just wanted him on the record, man, because it, it's true. We're, like, the, really the only two R&B guys on the label. And um, it was something to, like, give... You know, for for the fe- we, for the females, you know, for for the women, really, um, you know, to get them to dance to the to, to, you know, feel good, um, and and I knew it. It was like that last. It was the last day before we had to turn the project in the last few hours, 
And I came over and I was like, I got mine finished. I got my verse and I got the hook finished. You need to get on here. That's what I said. It's like, you need to get on here. They we knocked say, it out real quick. They say last minute mo- um, movie magic, last minute music magic Bruh. is real. It you is. know what I mean? Yeah. I've, been in, I've been in a weird space. I'm like, do I create 15 more songs just to make it right now? Because mm-hmm. I got a little more time and maybe they... But I'm like, ah, that one done. Mm-hmm. It's just that time because yeah. like you say y'all created yeah fire in the last minute and i think our song was last second too yeah both of them the t- <laughs> two standout records really man so i'm glad you like it though man Thank yeah you. it sounds Thank fire you. um who are your musical influences bro like, <laughs> when you're not listening to yourself who are you listening to there's only about three people and they all by the way before he answers he only listens to music on edit yeah. You don't even listen to cuss music. No. So he missing half the juice. That <laughs> nigga missing half the greatness. <laughs> no, it's a fact. I mean. It's, it's cool. Like, oh, it's, not it's not a fact. It's not a fact. It's not a fact. It's not a fact. It's an opinion. Uh, um, go ahead. Who, who's your musical influences? Okay, so Chris Brown. Um, um, and then as far as the female singers, Kehlani and. Mm. There's one other person. I would say, I don't. I would say future, but melodic future. Mm-hmm. Hendrix. 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 Bye yeah. bye. Uh, yeah. Ah, ooh, bye bye. Like <laughs> you know, like melodic Hendrix, man. Melodic Hendrix. Like the, those three, probably. For sure. Yeah. And then plus you guys too. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like all of you, literally all of you. Yeah, straight up. So what's next, my brother? What's next? Um, well, I got some singles I'm working on. I just dropped, not dropped one, I just previewed one on, on the gram. Um, Which was hard, by the way. Thank you, bro. Song's I hard, by it. the way. Thank you, man. I thank wish you. I should have I should have did some more prep. I should have told you to send it over so we can give a little preview to the people. Because <laughs> it's stupid. Thank it's you, just man. Stupid. But y'all can go follow him on IG mm-hmm. and go hear that preview. Please. Please, you'll like it, man. It's Hit a, a follow too, bitch ass niggas. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I got you, my dog. Got you. Um, um, I mean that's what's next, man. Is it's it's singles and music videos. That's what I'm getting in the works for. Damn, my dog. Uh, he got you. Yeah, I know he does. He I'm, got just, you. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you. You were working, man. But uh, music videos and more and more singles, and then trying to um, come up with my uh, next project. Hell for yeah. sure. That's what Hell I'm yeah. thinking, bro. Yeah. Honestly. But I'm excited about your new project, too, bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, if there is a project out there in the air, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? October 20th, home. <laughs> Be on the lookout. It's a bat team. It's a you know. bat team. You, you know. know. All right. Uh, let's give it a round of applause for my nigga, Jim. <laughs> so it's game time. Game time. Game time. Black and white time. For those of y'all that don't know Black and White, it's a simple game, easy game. We play it on all our podcasts. This one is a little different. We speed it up, rapid speed. It's easy. This side of this side of the coin, you pick one. If you can't pick one or if it's both, we take a shot. If you can't pick one, we move on to the next one. I'm going to get so easy with that shit. <laughs> it's like, coming out the clean, way bro. I said that, it's like, coming out oh, clean and fast, like, bro. What? That shit, dude. Yeah. Give myself a round of applause for that shit. <laughs> Uh, let's pour some shots. You got yours? I do, man. It was too strong at first. I was like, bro. I loaded up. My eyes got big. All right. I predicate these questions on taking shots because I uh, try to get them as complicated and as hard as possible for my brothers. And I do my homework on the guests and try to, uh, you know, make it fun for everybody. Mm-hmm. So first question, Chris Brown or Bruno Mars? You suck. Man, you suck, bro. You know, I he's my inspiration too, bro. I forgot to mention that. I know. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I'm gonna have to drink, bro, because nah, nah. Those two, those two are probably my biggest. I can't believe I forgot Bruno, man. Dang. Oh shit. All right. Oldies R&B or two thousands R&B? Two thousands. Mariah Carey or Beyonce? Mariah. Marvel or DC? Mm. 
DC. Movies or shows? Movies. Drake or Ye? That's <laughs> Drizzy. Dance music or slow music? Slow. Usher or Michael Jackson? Usher. That's crazy. Usher. I love Usher, but that's crazy. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z or uh, Clash uh, uh, Attack on Science. Attack on Science. My dog. Attack on Science. Oh, wait. Wait. Nah, we're gonna have to drink, man. Those those two shows. Mm-mm. Which you need to watch, by the way. All of you. Really good shows. You too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Country or contemporary rock? I can't do no country, bro. Contemporary rock. Old Testament or New Testament? It's like, can you even pit those two? Again? Like, you gotta know if you can, bro. Oh man. Oh, bro, you can't. You can't. So shot. Uh yeah. Old Testament. Happiness or wealth? Wealth. Because happiness is fickle. Let's give a round of applause for my man, Jim the Man. Anything you want to plug in, my brother? Plug in. Plug in. Shout out. Uh, oh, give sure. a shout out to anything that's coming up. You kind of already touched on it. Well, what's next? Mm-hmm. But any shout outs, uh, plug in Instagrams, IGs, yeah. all that good shit, YouTubes, where they can find you on everything. Okay. All that. Yeah, I want to shout out... Um, the hardest workers in the room right now, you know, my team, man, my brothers, like, I want to shout y'all out, man, because even when I was away for a minute, you guys were still working hard as ever, you know, just building the brand and um, making a huge scene out here in 805, like, oh, you, like, crazy, I want to shout y'all out, man, for sure, um, and those who aren't here, you know, Bill, Dre, Zebo, you know, all my guys. Um, song, I didn't forget you. I forget anybody. Your cousin. Ty, I can't forget my cousin Ty. Yeah, my dog. Everybody, man. Um, so I want to shout y'all out. And then Valley. Valley. Oh, yeah, there's too many guys. Yeah, yeah. I got, uh, hey, now you, you know what I mean. What I be doing in the internet, if you're asking me, you want to shout everybody out? No, nigga, I don't. I'm going to miss hella niggas. <laughs> Straight up, man. Um, um, what was that second part of the question? Oh, uh, where you can find me plugging in. Uh, my Instagram handle is Mike June the Man. You can find me there. And then on uh, as far as my music goes on all streaming platforms, it's June the Man on all streaming platforms. You're the man of listening. You never know. You might like it. I like it. I like it too. Let's give it a round of applause for June the Man. All right, so that concludes this episode. We'll see y'all next week. You did. You did.